is going on youtube it's brendan from market makers guys had a fun birthday weekend this past weekend i am now 45 i am half dead <laughs> so i want to try to make sure this last half of my life is well funded and i have no money worries i know a lot of you feel the same way we're in this to make as much money as possible if you watch last thursday's video you saw before price got there i gave you the exact level where i was expecting the s p to retrace 4336 Put it out there on X as well to remind everybody. And of course, look at this. A nice more than two spot, 2% 2 drop. What a great birthday present. A 95 point drop. Guys, we're in the search for a false bottom. I want to show you where I think we could get a false bottom, meaning we're going to rally at some point and then we're going to pull back down in this cycle. Okay. And honestly, <laughs> I could make this video extremely short. You guys know my videos tend to get long sometimes. Most people like that, but I could make this video extremely short and just show you two charts. And this is all you need to know. The main one is this one, the 10 year yield. Okay. The 10 year yield is now at the highs of 2006, seven cycle. We got up to five spot, 2% had a liquidity event in the marketplace, essentially combination with the MBS, the mortgage backed securities and everything else. But we got right up to this level, five spot, 2%. That's 5% at the golden ratio phi. Okay. And that puts a lot of pressure on the markets. This is nobody wanting to buy our debt. So bonds are selling off. Yields are going up. We're running massive deficits. We have over $33 trillion in debt. To put that in perspective, at the time of the GFC, I think we had 6 or $7 trillion. And then post-GFC, we just kept printing money. So it kept going up and up and up from there. We have more than 4 x our debt over the last, what, dozen years or so. And... Lots of presidents are to blame, but the main debt increasers were Obama and now Biden. Okay, we're running massive fiscal deficits. Trump added to the debt as well. So we haven't had anybody fiscally responsible in office. But guys, this is what happens. And the market's freaking out about this. Watching Bloomberg, they have no idea what's going on. Well, what's causing this? What's is it China? Is China causing this? Or is it is it some other reason? Is it bond vigilantes? Guys, these are like historic normal rates. I mean, this we've had the last, the reason we had the longest bull market in stock market history is because we had basically 0% rates since the GFC. That's free money. You can borrow money super cheap. Companies could borrow money. They could buy back their stock. They could do lots of different things. But now you're getting rates more where they should be. And as this keeps rising, you're going to have an event in the marketplace where it just dries up liquidity combined with the economy slowing. And that's the recession. And just like the GFC, GFC, those two components combined, you're going to see a massive drawdown. You had 57% market break in the GFC. Okay. We've been over the seven year cycle many times. Don't want to waste your time. What I want to show you though, is why I think soon we're going to be there for a pullback. Let me show you this because I, as the market looks for a bottom, Look at the MFI. You see the MFI is getting close to overbought here on the 10-year. So the question is, how much higher can this still go? Well, this has been tracking very accurate momentum on our Momentum Master is absolutely powerful here. But when you look at this, when you get overbought, do you see this? You get overbought. Let's just look at a more recent structure right here because this happened back in May. 
So you got overbought. Doesn't matter that you pulled back and went on this parabolic rise. You got overbought here in May and you pulled down. Okay. And when that happens, the market is going to look to rally. So as you get closer to overbought, it's going to be a pause for rates to go higher. But that pullback is going to send the market up in combination potentially with the S&P holding its 200. Remember, we went over this, the two factors. I could make this really short for you guys, right? The two factors. How the S&P handles its 200 will determine the whole market strength. So if we get the 200, we bounce off the 200, we can easily rally back up. However, if we fall and fail at the 200, What's going to happen? The GFC cycle where on September 29th, 2008 to March 2nd, 2009, the market dropped 45%. Okay. That would be this cycle. So let's look at this because even if we did rally, where would it rally to? But we got to go to the DXY. So the DXY guys keeps marching up in confluence with yields. I have this going to 107. Remember when we got the 112, previously when we were at 112, you had the market down in the 3500 range. And that's the 2618 harmonic expansion. And I do believe we're going to get there. Okay, we're going to get there. But before that happens, I think you're going to get a breather in the marketplace. Let's look at the VIX, even though it means nothing. It's at 1819. Who cares? And let's go ahead and move forward and look at Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, guys, I shorted this in the room in our Discord. I posted a trade. I'll show you how I got that number, but I can show you right here. I'll show you on the daily time frame as well. But this printed a Fibonacci pattern right at the 1618. I posted a trade for 28,417, and that is over a thousand points in profit. I'll show you this pattern on the daily time frame. Guys, if you do want to trade with us, Check out our key sponsor, Simple FX, an absolutely fantastic platform to trade. That's Simple FX, guys. With our link, which I'll pin in the YouTube comments, it's also in the video description, you do get up to an instant $5,000 available based on your first deposit in your margin to trade with immediately. You don't have to roll it over. You don't have to complete tasks or any of that dumb shit. You get to trade with it right away based on your deposit. And guys, we have a major tournament coming up for Simple FX. Going to be making an announcement on it soon. And they will pay for your first month in our room. To get that deal, just message Lee in the Telegram. That link is in the video description. And to trade all the cryptos, guys, you can check out Bing X. Simple has everything. They have Forex, indices, individual equities, uh, commodities, everything you could possibly want, Bitcoin and some cryptos as well. All right. So let's get back to this. So looking at our chart here, Bitcoin still trying to keep this upwards trend. Obviously, based on our wave projection of 31,245, you can see this is this gave Bitcoin a lot of difficulties. This is where we short it. Been over this many times, multiple times on our Discord. However, if we do find some type of temporary false bottom at the S&P 200 with yields potentially pulling back, what's my upside projection? The one that's going to blow a lot of bears out of the water if it plays out, 41K. Okay, If it plays out, you could have that parabolic surge, that big massive surge before the next decline. I would be looking at 39 to 41K. That that's if the S&P holds its 200 and it's getting close. So we're going to look at the S&P here next. But looking at Bitcoin here, this is where I got my trade from, guys. So if you understand Fibonacci patterns, you can learn these on our Discord. The 1618-28417, I shorted this in confluence with the markets, with what the yields were doing, with what the DXY was doing. And to give you the X5 pattern here, this is what I was looking at. These retracement levels, focusing primarily on BCD leg here. You can see the 1618 was struck just right here at the level and just got slightly above it. But that's what I was looking at when I short it. And this shorts in great profit over a thousand points as I'm recording this right now. Okay. So could this keep coming down and then bounce back up at some point it'll bounce again, but we got to see what the markets do. If the S and P loses a 200 and starts making a double top or something underneath it, then I expect this just to keep falling. Right? So let's go ahead and look at this. Let's look at the, well, let's start off with the Dow, the mini S and P. 
<laughs> this fell right through its trend channel, 33,130. Where do you think it's going? I think it's going to 33,055. That's where I think it's going. Fell right through the trend channel below its 200. And this, again, is the warning sign I, I keep talking about in my videos, guys. In my videos, we keep talking about how this is a mirror image of the S&P. 30 companies plucked from each sector of the S&P. And look, if this thing lost its 200 this way, could the S&P also lose its 200 this way? Yes, it could. And if we're in that GFC cycle of fall equinox to spring equinox with a massive decline, it would look something like this, losing your 200, backtesting 200, falling further down. But the Dow is not the broader market, maybe representative of the broader market. The S&P is the broader market. So this is what we want to focus on. Now, when you look at the accuracy of trend channels, you guys know I had my channel within a channel. I was poking fun and throwing some shade at JP Morgan because their chief technical analyst the following week came on and showed his channel in a channel on CNBC lines up the exact same way mine did. I, and I know a lot of people could do it. I just thought that was funny. But 4592, guys, this is a short we took in the room. Who gave you that? Who else can give you that trade? Right. So many people out here say, oh, don't 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 react or don't predict. Just react to the market. If you understand patterns, if you understand cycles, you can get these massive trade setups. And again, this is all about stacking as much profit as you can in this once in a generation cycle. OK, bubble cycles aren't supposed to come around all the time. Eight percent drawdown from my trade. 8% drawdown, massive, almost nailed the top within what, $12 or something of the exact top. So let's look and see what this is doing right now. Let me zoom in here so you guys can see this a little bit better. Looking at the S&P, guys, here's the 200. Now, why I don't care about the 200 personally. I don't use it to trade with at all. But I watch it because algorithms trade with it. Day traders trade with it. Retail trades with it. The basic the basic TA you see on Bloomberg, you see on CNBC, you see Tom, Lee, Tom Lee's house come on there and they're like, oh, I'm looking at a Fibonacci retracement. It's all very basic TA. Lots of that's on YouTube. Very basic TA. Doesn't understand cycles. Doesn't understand patterns patterns outside of a double top or a head and shoulders. But this is what everybody's going to be looking at. This is your demand zone right here. You just took out your low, by the way, as I'm recording this, you got down to where we get to here. We got to 4240. The previous low was 4243. So this is at 4218. So again, what I'm looking at here is if the S&P comes down and kisses this, are we going to get our false bottom? False bottom means what? False bottom means you come down to the 200, it holds, right? Then you rally back up to some level. But I anticipate us staying in this trend channel. We stayed in the channel going up. I think we're going to stay in the channel going down. So I'm going to show you some targets of where that could go. But this has to happen with confluence of a couple of things. Again, the DXY needs to pull back and calm down, right? It needs to go sit in a corner. The 10-year needs to calm down. You need to get this overbought so you get a retracement, even if it's going to continue up towards 5%, which I believe it will, it needs to pull back and calm down so you can get this rally in the marketplace. Why? Because once again, just like the, look at this, by the way, that 4336, that level I gave you talking about how accurate trend channels can track. Look at that. That's right here. That's this candle that tapped the outside of the up channel that you fell out of that got to 4336.6 right? The exact trade that I gave you. And look at this beautiful decline so far. So you can see the S&P, you can see the DGENs in the market. You can see people want this to go up, right? Big money selling. I mean, that's clear. They are selling big stocks. We're going to cover gold and silver as well, because I'm one of the few channels, one of the only channels that I know of that's been telling you gold is going to fall apart. And so is silver and giving you those targets. But if we get to this 200, come down and look, where could we intersect this at? If this just, if we just keep up this chop up and down, up and down, I can't give you the exact direction here of when this would come, but look at this. Thursday, October 12th. You see this right here? Thursday, October 12th, Friday, October 13th. Now, when did the market bottom last October in 2022? On the 12th. 
Markets love anniversaries. They love to repeat dates. Again, that September 28th, 2008 date. We've been red since then. You've been having this level down since then, but markets love this stuff. Okay. This is all esoteric knowledge in the marketplace. You hear people talk about seasonals. They don't understand anything. Why, why, why is October always weak? It's the fall equinox. Why is the March always weak? It's the spring equinox. And people say, no, that's reporting. That could be earnings. This has been this way since the inception of the marketplace. Go look at the crash of 1929, okay? That was not the modern market with all the different ETFs and funds and all of the dis distributions and everything else that they're doing now. That, that, this has been this way forever. This is why guys like Benner was able to do Benner's prophecies and nail most of the major market crashes and bottoms in the markets back in the 1800s. The market moves in cycles, okay? That's just how it is. It's a living organism. But when you look at this, if we end up bottoming here, let's just say the 12th, right? You could do it quicker because we're talking about, <laughs> at this juncture, we're talking about what, a 20 point drop, 25 point drop. So any one of these candles can come down and hit this. But if you pull up some, if yields pull back, you go sideways, let's just say you get your bottom. Where's that rally going to go to guys? Let's check this out. Where is that rally going to go to? And this can be a massive trade if what I think plays out. First of all, let's pull this to the 200 because we don't know, you know, at some point this is going to intersect. It won't make a huge difference, uh, but we'll go ahead and pull it down to say 42.25 to capture the 200 because this is at 42.18 right now. So somewhere around there. Look at the, look at on my screen. You see this? So if we come down, it could be today, could be the end of the day. We could come down and hit this, right? If we come down and hold this, where would that rally go? Well, if this channel holds true, which most of these, I mean, channels can be broken. You're breaking the channel right now, but they work very, very well as tools. If this channel holds true and you start rallying back up, end of year rally, think about some other confluences you could have here. Uh, November 1st is supposedly the next rate hike. If Powell doesn't raise rates because of market weakness, because he sees some data that he likes, if the members change their mind, that could help be a catalyst for a rally. But if you do rally up, 43.38 is a 382. If you're able to flip this, come higher, 43.69, and then basically the 618 at 4408. So again, Coming down to hit this, if this holds and you start coming back up, 4,400 is basically my cap here in the marketplace. And I think you're going to keep trending down after this rally as well. You'd have to break out of the channel, come back up. What's your catalyst for that with yields where they are? How are you going to get to 4,600, 4,800 on the S&P? Look at this. This is cratering as we're talking. How many of you took that short at 4,336? If you did, very happy for you. But this is pulling down more. But what's the catalyst for upside? 4,400 to me would be a massive rally. Obviously, it would be a massive rally coming there from 4,220, 4,240. And these conditions, but kissing the top of that trend channel, wherever this happens along the way here, end of year Santa Claus rally, which is just what? The winter solstice. That's all that is, right? But you get that end of the year rally. Guys, that's going to be the next big trade to look out for. And of course, that's just scenario one, which is holding the two. 200. If this pulls a Dow, if this pulls a CAC, if this pulls a DAX, the French and German markets, and loses the 200, well, uh, we're going to have to redraw this trend channel because your angle is going to change. And guess what? That's super bear. So if you come down, let's say you bounce up, make a double top, come back down, retest it a couple times, make a double bottom, make a double top, and then fall down again, and you're outside the channel, basically exactly what, what, what the Dow is doing right now. Where is it? Right here, falling out of the channel. If this keeps coming up and retesting the outside and breaking down, breaking down below 33. Again, mirror image here. Look how far below it is below the 200. This is something really important to watch, guys, because if that happens, then game on. You're going to 4,000. You're going to retest the lows at 3,500. And again, what is the 30? What is the drawdown? The average drawdown in the market in a recession, 33%. That takes you to the 618, roughly. 3,200.
All of these levels can produce big rallies. All of the, just like the rallies you've been seeing here in this chop up and down, up and down. All of these levels are key, but ultimately with the recession, I believe you're going to have capitulation. The event you're going to have, no matter what, in my, in my opinion, is coming down the test 3200 based on recession norms. That's what the S&P does. You're at 4243 right now. That's without any talk of a bubble. Now, I believe in the bubble. As you guys know, that target's going to get much lower. The end resting place being around 2000 to 2400 but this is where we're at right now this is the whole marketplace right here guys determining are we going to keep breaking down or bounce up and try to rally to 4338 to 4400 back in that range set up a sweet short and let this thing just fall apart and stack money all about stacking that money. Let's look and see what the MFI is doing. Let's go move forward. MFI trying to put in this double bottom. Let me show you this on the chart, what it's doing. If we look at this from a double bottom perspective, you see the double bottom pattern you made here on the MFI. That's how you got this rally up for the second peak, right? From your big, massive double top. That's how you got the rally up, hit the top of the trend channel, broke down, retested the trend channel, broke down to where we are now. So this is what you're trying to do, these exact same steps. Get your little baby rally, you get sold into, see if you can hold this base, most likely this 200 right there, and then bounce up, bring this, project it back up somewhere along the trend line somewhere along the fib level here and set us up another beautiful trade that's the four hour time frame you can see you're down thrusting here and again your 1618 is just below guys i mean this could easily be hit today as i record 4210 that was the target i gave you 4210 and look how close we're getting to it let's go ahead and look at the nasdaq NASDAQ's holding a better 14.645 and NASDAQ doesn't want to break. I think for the NASDAQ to break this downward trend channel, you see this? For the NASDAQ to break, it's going to need the S&P to lose the 200. That's what it looks like because you're 20 points away from testing it on the S&P. If it loses a 200, you're going to see the NASDAQ start breaking down. You have all the big tech, the Magnificent 7, which held up the market. NASDAQ rallied 40% and people see these stocks sell off. When I say people, I mean retail. They see, oh, oh my God. Gosh, NVIDIA got down to 420. I can buy, oh, 420, bro. 420, that's a great number. Let's buy it. You know, this is literally the mindset. You got to remember, most people are NPCs. Most people are lemmings. They have no idea. They're trading on Robinhood. They have no idea what's actually going on in the marketplace. But the NASDAQ wants to hold this bottom. You have your low, you have your higher low, and it wants to hold this bottom. If the S&P loses that 200, you're going to see this come back down. And the NASDAQ 200 is way down here at 13,722. Do you see that? So that's the key inflection point, guys, is that 200. If, by the way, you do hold this and you hold this low, and let's say the NASDAQ can hold this low as the S&P tests the 200 and it doesn't get any lower than this, your 1618 takes you back up to 15.1. You see this? And this is all this would be. You'd get some candles back up. You'd start rallying, hit the 1618 somewhere around here, turn down maybe at the top of the trend channel again and break back down. And guys, these are the trades. These are the trades that are going to make the big difference in how you, uh, I guess, profit in this down cycle because lots of people are going to be losing lots of money. They're going to think they're right every time it rallies up. And as long as the trend stays in place, as long as the DXY is increasing, as long as you have the cycle factors such as yields keep rising, this is going to keep repeating rinse and repeat and people lose so much money on these moves because they don't understand what's happening in the marketplace. So that's what I'd be looking at. And if the NASDAQ is going to keep falling, again, you want to watch this and see if it's going to break this trend channel, which could be anyway around 14.4, 14.3, depending where it fell through and start pulling down. But everything's going to hinge on the S&P in the 200. You can see this on the NASDAQ here on the one hour time frame. This has just been day trading opportunities for those of you that wish to partake. Basically a Wyckoff sideways market here, accumulation or distribution, putting in a new low here in your immediate range. So but that makes sense since the S&P is showing a lot of weakness. What's Apple doing? Apple's staying above the 169, guys. So again, my premise has been the markets are going to be in a lot of trouble if Apple loses a 786 at 169. It dipped below, came up, sign of strength. I told you maybe you get a lower high out of this. If it starts doing something like that, 
then you know the markets are going to keep going down. The world's biggest stock, okay? If this loses 169, that this is 11% of the NASDAQ. So this one stock is 11% of the NASDAQ. If this thing starts falling apart like this, then you know that you're going to come in for new lows. As long as it holds, these levels are going to hold. Tesla, same thing, adhering to the trend channel beautifully. If we do get some type of rally off of the S&P getting bullish momentum, bouncing off the 200 yields, doing a pullback because I got overbought on the 10 year, the dollar coming down again, the levels I'd be looking at are your immediate high, which is 278. And then the key level is 289 right here, the 1618. Okay. So that would be Tesla doing this, making us a Fibonacci pattern coming up to the 1618, building some type of top and then coming back down again. That's where I would want to trade Tesla, if we get that bounce, if we get the confluence of everything that needs to happen for the markets to put in a false bottom, you could see Tesla get up to 289, completing this beautiful W pattern, okay? W pattern in the marketplace. You'd be back here retesting the channel. And then, of course, if the markets continue to dump, you're going to be dumping out of that channel, moving back towards 217. That's a fantastic move if we can get something like that. Let's look at gold. Man, we, we, <laughs> We've been crushing gold on this channel. I'm just laughing because, you know, I know like when I first came to this space in uh, spring of 2021, the people that were like big gold bugs and the crypto people, the crypto bros and the gold bugs, they all hated each other, right? I just thought it was funny because I just trade. I don't care. I have a lot of physical metal, but uh, the, the gold bug people, you know, I guess I'm never going to get a gold sponsor on my show. <laughs> But, um, you know, I talked about this for weeks, guys, for weeks on this channel. You guys have been watching. Know this. We were looking for this top up here at 2055. It got a little bit higher, 2067, shorted up here. Massive drawdown from my short. Look at this. The whole way down, 12 spot, 1.8%, $251. Gold keeps breaking down. Shorted this over and over again all along the way. Gave you guys this 1945, 1947 level, I guess a week ago or so on the video and told you to look out for this. I like it here because I told you it's making the exact same pattern as the markets. And look at that breakdown, okay? And when you look at this, where's it going? You fell through. Again, this is that retracement level, right? That You fell through the 46. To 1847. You're about to test the bottom of the channel. Again, trend channel and effect here. Even without Fibonacci, you can just trade this based on testing, making bearish structures at the top or bullish structures at the bottom. Your double bottom pattern, your W here. Okay. So we're about to test the base of the trend channel. This could keep drifting or start pulling up with the marketplace. And then just watch your trend channel where this comes up to. Okay. This to me, I think I pulled a fib on here. Let me go ahead and clean this up. I pulled a fib on here, if the markets do test the 200, the S&P tests the 200 and gets a really nice bounce off of it, you get the yields pulling back, then let me see where this could go. When I was pulling this from the top, I think 1900 was the key level. Assuming this low stays the low, obviously this would change. But yeah, you got confluence here of Fibonacci layer. And you have the 618 at 1896, the 382 at 1894. So right here is looks like it's going to be the headache for gold. So let's just say gold starts easing up. This is not date sensitive here, guys, but comes up here and does one of these things where it spikes out of the channel. I would look for 1896 to provide the key strong resistance here on a potential further breakdown. OK, I don't see the markets rallying too much because I don't see the catalyst existing throughout the next six months to bring you there and everything's going to be slowing down. And I think with the new ISM data, by the way, showing manufacturing was better than expected. I think you're going to get that rate hike. Now, it's just a, it's just a question of whether or not the market rallies off the fact that they think it's the last rate hike. You know how the salesman will be out there trying to rally the market. This continues to break down. Watch the trend channel down here, 1815 ish. And of course, the six was at 1787 if you start breaking down sideways. And if you look at silver, silver had a massive 4% dump the other day, the exact levels I gave you guys. I told you we got to hold the 618 at 22. And silver fell right through, fell below the 786 at 21 spot 24, and it's at 21 spot 19 right now, so trying to hold the 786. People asked me, what are my silver targets? And again, guys, I own a lot of metals, okay? So... <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I own a lot of metals. Trading metals and owning them are two separate things. We've talked about it many times. I'm not going to bore you with that. But these are two separate things. But I own a lot of metals, but I know what metals do in crash cycles and reset cycles, okay, and bubble cycles. So when you look at this, my 1618 is $16, bringing you right back into this range. Now, this is just based off this retracement here, as you can see, right? But when you look at Fibonacci confluence as well, if we go to our wave up market low to our market high, I get my 1618, 16 spot 42, 16 spot 06. So I'm basically looking at $16 silver on this pull down, which would still not equal the 2008 crash, which silver lost 61%. This is silver losing roughly 46%, 47%. And if you want it to go to exactly what it did last time, 61%, you're back at the bottom of the pandemic level. You see that? The bottom of the pandemic level. Again, that rule of thumb is my rule rule of thumb for every marketplace. Where will these markets ultimately go? Stocks, cryptos, commodities, these commodities, at least metals, these will all end up back in those pandemic levels. Some of them will end up below, some may end up slightly higher, but they will all end up back in the pandemic levels because the market moves in cycles and a cycle is nothing but a circle. It repeats over and over again. And we're in a key pivot time right now. So tune in next time to watch more uh, of our TA. And guys, this video, by the way, is going to be posted on X. So share it there if you're friends. I got my check mark on a upload this video there. Share it there if you're friends and have a great trading day. And uh, guys, I'll talk to you on Thursday for the next video. Take care, everybody.